Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is glorious. Our God is faithful. Our God is true and everlasting. And we give Him all the praise. And we give Him all the glory. This is the Discipleship Handbook. This is Lighthouse Radio. My name is Prophet Rian. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's countenance shine upon you. We are dealing with Module 3, Growing as a Disciple, as part of the Discipleship Handbook, where we look at what it means to be a disciple, what is the duties of a disciple, how we grow and how we overcome as a disciple. Like I said, this is Module 3, Growing as a Disciple, and we will be now be looking at what it means to be baptized in water, the baptism in water. And from the outset, I want to make it clear that, as I mentioned, a disciple follows the Lord. But it means there needs to be stressed that your salvation is not determined by being baptized in water. Your salvation is determined by the redemption of the blood, your faith in Christ. If you serve the Lord and if you follow the Lord, um, because there are uh, teachings and theology out there that says that if you are not baptized in water, then you are not saved and you are not redeemed. And this is why it's important the baptism in water, why it is actually very, very important, but it does not determine your salvation. Salvation only comes by the blood of our Lord. And so, and I said so far, um, we have looked at what it means to grow as a disciple. And we have to remember that we are our key scripture when it comes to discipleship comes out of Matthew 28 verse 19 which says go therefore and make disciples of all the nations and then it says baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that it is the mandate and the duty of a disciple not only to be baptized but also to baptize others. For it says in Acts 2 verse 38 this is the New King James Version then Peter said to them Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we need to understand that the baptism of water goes hand in hand with the baptism of the Spirit. As we will see in the study, baptism of water is our commitment to God to lead a new life Washing away the old ways so that we can be worshippers in fruit and truth. That's why the word says, as, we, as what we have read out of Acts 2, where it says the remission of sins. Again, it needs to be stressed and emphasized that our sins are only washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Our covenant is by the blood. We have been redeemed and we have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. But the baptism of water is the outward sign, the manifested sign. It is our commitment towards God that we are now prepared to lay down the old life and to serve Him, to commit ourselves unto His glory, to serve His kingdom and to walk in His ways. And it also needs to be stressed that we can be baptized in the Spirit before we are even baptized in water. But so then when we are first baptized in water, this will then prepare the way for our baptism in the Spirit. For now, let us look at the concept of the baptism of water and why the baptism of water is so important. Firstly, we may ask why is baptism necessary? Well, we see how Jesus himself was baptized 
according to Matthew 3 from verse 20 it says then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him but John tried to prevent him saying it is I who need to be baptized by you and do you come to me but Jesus replied permitted just now for this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness then John permitted and after Jesus was baptized he came up immediately out of the water and behold the heavens were opened and he John saw the Spirit of God as a dove and a lightning on him and behold a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and delighted so here we see that Jesus was baptized in water and then just take note as well which was followed by the Spirit of the Lord coming upon him so if our Lord was then baptized in water then surely baptism is not a small issue let us also understand that Jesus allowed himself to be baptized to show his disciples part to, to show his disciples that baptism is part and parcel of our spiritual walk for it is about committing your life to the Lord and making a declaration you wish to serve Him and His kingdom. Let us again be reminded that Jesus is the cornerstone, the capstone of, 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 of the church. He is the foundation of our faith, of our salvation. So everything that Jesus did is a manifestation of the kingdom. So surely if Jesus was baptized in water, how much more must we not be baptized in water? And again, it was, even though Jesus at that time, he was born, a, you know, born into this world, born into flesh, he is still the Son of God. Yet he showed, to, he showed the disciples the importance of being baptized in water because it is a sign unto God it is an outward sign unto all those who witness it that you have committed your life to the Lord you see God has made it simple for us to follow his plan of salvation what God requires from us in order to be saved is to believe in his son Jesus Christ repent of our sins and commit our life to him which is physically but also spiritually displayed by, get, by us getting into water and being baptized which the, uh, the, the, the Greek word speaks about being immersed it speaks about being totally immersed and being um, coming under the water completely for the purpose of having him forgive our sins and to be born again in this manner so and over the years baptism has created much debate even though Jesus himself was baptized as I mentioned by the immersion of water and again you know it's very important just to look there at what Jesus did himself he went to John and said John you need to baptize me and they went into the river and Jesus was completely immersed under the water. That is where the word baptisto comes from. The word baptism. It means to be immersed. It means to be, to be completely covered. Because it is our commitment to God that God you need to completely cover my life by your presence you need to consume me for our God is an all consuming fire and he wants to con consume our entire lives it was after all John the Baptist as I mentioned who was stunned when Jesus came to him for baptism and even though this was the son of God Jesus again put his teachings into a practical demonstration by being immersed in the river Jesus was simply showing the importance to John and the disciples throughout the ages of the significance of the baptism which is the separation from the old and the new so many have asked you know is baptism necessary for salvation in other words will we fail to inherit eternal life as if we are not baptized 
we need to remember salvation comes by our faith in Jesus and, and, and our relationship with him so again baptism will not save us but baptism is surely the testimony we deliver in the natural and the spiritual realm to declare we are now seeking to serve the Lord as his disciple now we read in Acts 19 verse 4 then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. According to this verse, John the baptized baptized people by mentioning just the name of Jesus Christ only. This baptism is called the baptism of repentance. This baptism was the only Jesus baptism and was done away with because the purpose of the ministry was only to prepare the way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus introduced the complete baptism which is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptism is not only about repentance but also preparing to lay down one's life before the Father so that the Holy Spirit can fill a person and work within a believer. The purpose of the Holy Spirit to fill us is that we can walk in the ways of our Lord Jesus so that we can become more like our Lord, so that we can glorify our Lord. After all, Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. So by the baptism of the Spirit, or by the baptism of the water, excuse me, we prepare a life to be led by the Spirit so that we can walk in the ways and the truth and the life of our Lord Jesus. So again, baptism of the water needs to lead to the baptism of the Spirit. Otherwise, it is only the baptism of repentance. When it comes to baptism by water, theological arguments have caused us to miss the spiritual principle of this action. It has never been something that has been bound by the physical, but it speaks of our spiritual desire and hunger to draw closer to God and to draw closer to His beauty and divinity. Arguments and debates regarding the form of baptism negate the longing of the Lord for us to make a dedicated commitment unto Him in service and in our life. As we see with the spiritual betrothal of the bride unto the bridegroom, which is Jesus, there is a time where we have to push aside all that separates us from God, and we need to be cleansed by the washing of the Word, and we need to be separated by the spiritual act of baptism of water and of spirit. It is true that according to the word, demonstrated by Jesus himself, baptism is the immersion into water in order for us, for our entire being to be renewed, as it prepares the way for the Holy Spirit in a closer walk with the Father and the Son. It is not just, uh, it is not just an act of, of being immersed in water. It is truly a spiritual act and a very deep, significant act which is witnessed by heaven itself. And again, as I mentioned, baptism is about immersion. And it is about willingly making a decision and a self-commitment to serve the Lord. This is why the baptism that you get these days, the sprinkling of water, that is not immersion, that does not speak about uh, coming under the power or under the presence or under the covering of God, which is symbolized by the true baptism of water. This is why as I mentioned, you cannot be baptized as an infant, for an infant cannot yet make the choice. Baptism of water, it is a choice you, that you make, a voluntary choice, uh, according to your, 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 your intellectual facu faculty, according to your logic, according to your rational thinking, but according to your spiritual man, that you make a choice to follow God, so it is a choice that you have to make according to your own will. Such a choice you cannot make when you are an infant. When we therefore, uh, you know, take a baby when a baby is, um, and we, 
And if we want to sprinkle water on the baby or whatever the action, that is not the baptism of, the, of this water. That is merely a, a process of dedication where we dedicate the child unto the kingdom of God and we call the parents uh, unto a state of commitment to raise the child. But the baptism of the Spirit truly happens when you one day have made a choice that you want to lay down the old life and you want to serve the Lord completely and utterly. And again, this is why I said you can merely dedicate an infant to the Lord, but the infant, when grown up, needs to make it a spiritual decision to be baptized by laying down his or her life for the Lord. After all, as I said, Jesus demonstrated he prepared the path, he prepared the way for us. If, if the baptism of water, uh, or at least if, if we could be uh, baptized as an infant, then surely that is what Jesus would have demonstrated and would have shown us. But no, Jesus was demonstrated, was baptized when he was a fully grown man, because he made that choice and he made that decision. Now I want to emphasize again that the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptizos, which means to wash out or immerse. And also this Greek word is derived from a Hebrew term, um, which also speaks about immersion. Some might be surprised to learn that Christian baptism has actually its roots in Judaism. Indeed, baptism is an old Hebrew custom, and if one understands it, one will understand the significance of it and why Jesus himself was baptized. During Jesus' time as today in Israel, baptism was the immersion into water bath called the mikvah, and the word mikvah means a pool of living water which was used for ritual purification. This procedure is called tevilia, which means immersion. So before John the Baptist came preaching, repent and be baptized, immersion was therefore an accepted practice in the life of the Hebrew people. As John the Baptist stood in the Jordan River, he wasn't doing anything radical or new. According to the Hebrew t tradition of immersion, they understood this was part of the biblical faith before the coming of Jesus. Immersion or baptism still remains to be seen as the gateway into being set apart unto the Lord spiritually. And that word, set apart, it is what baptism is all about. It's not about redemption. It is about being set apart. And the power of immersion was therefore seen by the Hebrews as something that cleanses the spiritually unclean and brings about healing and restoration. Throughout the Old Testament, baptism or cleansing by water was a central part in dealing with uncleanliness. For example, a leper would go through washing rituals according to Leviticus chapter 14. Not for physical cleansing, but spiritual cleansing. There was a story of Naaman who emerged seven times in the Jordan River and was healed. And the immersion completed the healing process for leprosy. And the priest also went through immersions in preparing for temple service according to Leviticus chapter 16. And the same concept of cleansing and healing from our old ways and our old nature is carried over to the New Testament. The method of baptism during biblical times was different than today. The person would first wash himself and make himself physically clean. Then he would walk into the water by himself and squat down in the, in, into like a fetal position. This was usually done three times and was witnessed by someone who stood nearby to make sure the emerging person was completely covered by the water. This witness would declare the immersion complete in the name or as a follower of Jesus. So according to Jewish law, the immersion had to have a required witness. In several New Testament references such as, such as 1 Corinthians chapter 1 uh, and Matthew 21, 25, Acts 1, 22 and Acts 19 verse 3, we see baptism mentioned in conjunction with the name of individuals such as Paul 
and John. Still today, not only does God as Father, Son and Spirit bear witness to the baptism, but it is preferably that someone bears witness to declare the baptism valid in the spiritual and in the natural. Brides in ancient Israel, as well as brides in Israel today, experienced a mikvah prior to her wedding. And this immersion in water is part of the bride's physical and spiritual preparation for the wedding ceremony. The mikvah represents a separation from the old life to a new life. And of course, you know, we are the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been betrothed to Him by the blood covenant, by the covenant of grace. So, if a bride in ancient Israel went through this whole mikvah, through this whole process of immersion, of cleansing, to prepare herself for a... Uh, for, uh, for a spiritual union with her, with her bride, uh, with with the bridegroom, then surely we as the bride needs to prepare, and we prepare ourselves to be betrothed to be in union with our bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ. The need for cleansing and making holy is therefore clear throughout the many types of washing connected with the temple worship. For example, in Bible times, the tabernacle and later the temple was the place of God's presence. A people could only approach the Most High at these places, and only if they were true, ritually clean. And the unclean were cut off from worship until their condition had been dealt with. Just so, we as the Bride of Christ also have to experience our mikvah, which is being baptized in water and in spirit while also being cleansed by the word of God. Our baptism of water and spirit is indeed our separation from the old life, so that we may be betrothed as a new creation unto God. Mark 16 says, He who believes and is baptized, sorry, this is from verse 16, He who is bapt believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So, how we need to be set apart unto God? We need to truly be set apart unto God, so that we may be found ready as the bride for the bridegroom. The baptism, therefore, remains a question of life and of death, and a cleansing from this unclean world and our unclean ways. It is a time when new life is given and actions reflect inward change. The most important reason we have been called to be baptized or to be immersed is to reinforce the Bible's message of fresh separation. As believers, we have been called out of darkness and into the light of Jesus. He called us as his own precious people. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen great generation, as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So baptism or immersion has many avenues of purposes in Judaism, yet one main goal remains, which is to be set apart. And this is the one desire of our Lord for us to also be set apart. After all, the entire Old Testament speaks and echoes of this desire. And the 613 laws of Moses were so that the nation could be set apart. We are set apart to God as His children. He has called us to set ourselves apart in His world and through our actions as we choose to obey His word and therefore replic replicate His will, we set ourselves apart to Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 17 to 18 says, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So baptism or immersion's purposes or purpose is to spiritually cleanse the sinner from all that is contrary to the world. It is to cleanse us from this world. Acts 2 verse 38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and that every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Separation is central to the gospel of the Messiah. God's desire is people to be set apart or holy, which in Hebrew is kadosh. As we separate ourselves from this world, we actually 
separate ourselves unto God. And we have been called to draw lines of separation between the common and the pure, the clean and the unclean, and the profane and the holy. Separation is the calling of all believers. Now, immersion, therefore, you can see it as a procedure that sets us apart as holy to God, or kadosh. Immersion is also an act of repentance following our rebellion as the old man against God. All believers have been called to the priestly worship of God through a covenant with Him. We are, we are to walk in cleanliness, to be free of defilement, and to demonstrate God, daily God's standards. We become unclean when we cross the lines that God has set for holy living. So, our walk as a disciple, to grow as a disciple, it entails being cleansed from old ways, laying it down, being separate, separating ourselves for service, so we can walk in holiness and purity. Because as a disciple and by the blood of Jesus, we pass over from the old life into a new life. This is why Jesus died for us and rose again on the third day, so we may draw closer to God and experience Him. It is therefore a mandate for the disciple to be set apart by being baptized, and therefore, and also baptizing others. We see this action, for example, in Acts 8, and you can actually read the entire uh, scripture from verse 26 to 40. When Philip actually baptized an eunuch, and I read from verse 36, as they continued along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch explained, Look, water, what forbids me from being baptized? And Philip said to him, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I do believe that Christ Jesus is the Son of God. And he ordered that the chariot be stopped. And both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water, and Philip baptized them. So what was the prerequisite for the baptism? Simple. The eunuch had to believe with all his heart that Jesus is the Lord. This is, after all, the definition of a disciple. And so Philip fulfilled his task as a disciple by baptizing the eunuch. And yes, all disciples are called to be baptized and then to baptize others in water and also in spirit. So baptism is important. The author of Hebrews urged his listeners to return to God through repentance, coupled with immersion. Hebrews 10 verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Immersion also takes another meaning with the life and death and the resurrection of Jesus. Colossians 2 from verse 11 to 13 says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made with, without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him at baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Indeed, a true desire to be spiritually separated unto God, as demonstrated by the water baptism, speaks of our desire to be free from our old life in order to be raised anew into Jesus. It speaks of our desire to be converted from our heathen ways unto Christianity. As mentioned, this powerful conversion is understood in Judaism, while the apostles and the early believers continued the Jewish practice of mikvah, or baptism, as a symbol of conversion. Therefore, as a disciple, we need to understand the significance of the baptism as to why we are being baptized and we are, why we are baptizing someone else. And remember, baptism is done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We baptize in the authority of Jesus, but to the recognition of the Trinity, where all three persons of the Godhead pays witness and testimony to the rebirth. Note, there has been confusion when it comes to baptism, where some say we must only baptize in the name of Jesus, for he is God. However, Jesus taught the proper form of baptism. Baptism is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, according to Matthew 28. 
But you might ask, why do we see so many instances in the New Testament where people were baptized in the name of Jesus only? As I mentioned in Acts 22 verse 3, it says, And Peter said to them, Repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, Acts 10 verse 48, it says, And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. However, we need to keep in mind what it says in John, 1 John chapter 5 verse 6, it says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And, three, and there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. You see, as I said, the baptism is what, about spiritual recognition. All three persons of the Godhead have to agree. Because even though God is one, there are three persons who all play an important role in our lives. Even though God is one. To only baptize in the name of Jesus is not to recognize the presence and reality of the Father and the Holy Spirit. The disciples would have spoken about the baptism in the name of Jesus, for they simply wanted the Jewish people to understand that this deals with the new covenant, and not the old covenant of ritual cleansing. The disciples would have talked about the baptism in the name of Jesus to effectively indicate the gulf between physical law and grace. But when they baptized, it was most likely in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So again, baptism is about recognition. To be baptized in the name of the Father or unto the Father means publicly by a significant right to receive his system of of religion, to bind the soul to obey his laws, to be devoted to him, to receive as the guide and comforter of the life of the life, his instructions and to trust to his promises. To be baptized unto the Son in like manner is to receive him as the Messiah, our prophet, our priest and our king, to submit to his laws and to receive him as our Saviour. To be baptized Unto the Holy Spirit is to receive him publicly as the sanctifier, the comforter and guide of the soul. And the meaning then may be less thus, thus expressed. That baptizing them unto the Father, Son and Holy Spirit by a solemn profession of the only true faith. And by a solemn consecration to the service of the sacred trinity. The significance of baptism is therefore summed up in 2 Corinthians 5 from verses 17 to 21. It says, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled to us by him, by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the world of reconciliation. Now we are ambassadors of Christ, and through a God that beseech us by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, by he reconciled to God. For he has made him to be a sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, take note, we need to always seek and follow the leading of the Spirit and the Lord when baptizing someone. At times we can allow a religious mindset to stand in our way from doing the work of the Lord. Even though it is proper for baptism by immersion, at times, and I want to stress this, at, the dial, at times the Lord can give the order for someone to be baptized by simply pouring water over them while they are kneeling or standing. It is after all about obedience. A disciple walks in obedience. So if you follow the Lord, you are called to be baptized and to baptize others in water. This is the walk of a disciple. For a disciple is set apart unto God, unto his kingdom, and unto a life committed to the Lord's way, truth and life. As I mentioned, Jesus was baptized to, as, a, as, a man, as a manifestation, spiritual, physically, of the importance for a disciple to set his life apart unto God. For a member, a true disciple is one who lays down his life, denies the self and carries the cross. 
And truly by this baptism, we prepare the way for us to grow and to become more like our Lord. May you be blessed and may the Lord keep you. And may we as disciples go out, not just, let us make sure that we are not just baptized, but that we can go and fulfill the great commission of baptizing others. And again, listen to what the Lord speaks to you. Let the Lord guide you and let the Lord lead you in all baptism and whatever you do throughout the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen.